Welcome to this new video about quickly adding GraphQL client to Ionic Framework app. First, we're going to quickly go through just setting up a basic Ionic application. Um, this will be set up using v4 for the Angular type. You can see we're just going to quickly run through this. Now let's get the server running to show you that we actually do have an application that we're going to start off with that's working. Here you can see the default display from Ionic. Okay, next up, let's set up GraphQL. To get this set up, we're just going to be able to use the ng-add Apollo Angular since the latest version of Ionic supports Angular schematics. So we're just gonna jump back over to our terminal and we're gonna add the statement and let this run and it should make the appropriate edits to our files to um, get all the required features. Let's verify everything got installed properly um, by doing an npm install and after that gets all done we should have the new node modules in place and so let's kind of start the ionic server all over again just to make sure our app is all set up and it runs properly so we cancel it and run it and i'm sorry ionic serve all over again and our app should be good to go let's see what the changes were made when we added apollo angler to our project. So first you can see right here looking at the package JSON there are a few node modules added. All those that start with Apollo were new things that got added. So next this GraphQL module was added. This is where all the interesting uh, features are set up um, specifically to create Apollo. The only real thing we're going to add in here later will be the specific URL that points to the GraphQL server that we're going to use in this example. The next file that got modified was the app module TS. The important thing here to notice was that the GraphQL module and the HTTP client module were imported here. These are going to be utilized to connect to the uh, remote GraphQL server. All right, let's add the remainder of the Apollo Angular example from the website. So uh, first up will be to add the actual URL that'll point us to the GraphQL server. We're just going to cut and paste this sample URL that was provided to us into our code. Let's switch back over to the GraphQL module. We have the appropriate line. Let's just paste that in and replace it. And now we have our server set up. So we're going to run everything again, and it's working. Now let's add the actual HTML changes to the template. So back again to the website. We're really just going to cut and paste this code purpose of this example is to just show how it works not really um, dig in too deep to everything so here's the template as you can see let's just copy it switch back over to our app nope I'm gonna put it on our home page let's replace some of this basic ionic template code and that's the template set up let's clean it up with a little bit of formatting we're not going to do anything special here with ionic Next up, let's add the changes to the actual home TS file. Once again, I'm just going to copy the code from the example. So we'll just let's just select all this, let's switch back over to our editor, and okay, home page TS. Paste that in there. All right, we have a couple of uh, imports that are missing. This on init comes from Angular Core. The Apollo will come from the Apollo Angular file. Let's just use our plugins or our helpers to kind of get these in. There you go. Next one is the GraphQL. I don't know that one off the top of my head. So let's switch back to the e sample and just get this GraphQL tag import. Let's copy that and we'll switch back paste it into our home page.ts file we should be good to go let's see if there's any more errors on this page all right we have a few more errors this is the typescript stuff so let's see what is the specific type of this result supposed to be um, here it is this apollo query result let's paste that in here okay where is this guy Right, there it is. All right, let's put a default. Let's type any in there for the type. 
All right, everything looks good, except we have this one error thing still nagging us. All right. Mm. All right, so the helper says that it should be errors and not error. So let's make this change. Everything looks, nope. One more error. All right, but, all right missing. Looks like, yeah, looks like I'm missing a parentheses. Let's put these parentheses in, and let's see if the application is actually going to work for us. So, let's switch back over. Oh, looks like our app appears to be running fine. Pretty awesome. We pulled the data back from the server. All right, let's uh, try to comment this code a bit so that it makes sense. First up, we have the Apollo. Uh, and on, on this Apollo component, there's a function called watchQuery. The query is in the GraphQL query language. Um, once again, talking about how the query language works, a separate video, but as you can see, we have rates. We're looking for rates that match against US dollar, and we want it to return to us a currency and a rate. Next up, value changes is basically watching the results of the query, and we're going to subscribe to that, and whatever result we get, we're going to set some local properties on our object. Uh, if we get some data back, we'll look for data and get the rates. Otherwise, we'll get a loading status, or if there's an error, it'll return an error status for us. These are things that can be utilized to update the user interface so that the user knows what's going on. All right. Uh, a few more comments here. Probably shouldn't use uppercase. I'm not screaming. Just trying to explain it. But that'll work for now. The loading status. So if you if it's taking a while, you'll see um, we can update the UI to let the user know we're still loading, and then once again with the errors. Let's wrap this up by taking one last look at the files that actually got changed. We'll start off with the app module TS. As I said before, the key changes here are the addition of the GraphQL module and the HTTP client module, which you can see have been added to the imports in the ng module module direct. Active. All right, next up is the GraphQL module. This was a completely new file, which has all the basic setups for you. It's really nice how that was handled for us. All we really had to do was add the URL that points to where our GraphQL server is. Next is our home page.html. Once again, we just cut and paste this from the sample. It's really just used to render the results that you can see there in rate and create a list of items. And then finally, the home page TS. First, we add our Apollo imports, or Apollo, or GraphQL, or Apollo query results. And as you can see, we inject the Apollo into our component through the constructor. All right, and then here inside of ng-init is where we have the rest of the code that makes the actual query, sets the local properties, which are then used to be rendered in the HTML file. Thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe to this channel, and I will see you next time.